Progesterone levels. What happens when you have low progesterone? What side effects come from high progesterone levels? What do optimal levels of progesterone do for you? I'm Steve Goldman from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those are about hormone optimization. In women of childbearing age, progesterone levels go up every month after ovulation and then they subside. So progesterone is pretty high during the second half of a woman's monthly cycle. That's called the luteal phase. And it's actually pretty low during the first half, which is called the follicular phase. Over a woman's lifetime, progesterone sort of starts to gradually decline over the four to six, maybe even 10 years leading up to menopause. It still has those little month to month bursts or bumps that happen after ovulation, but ovulation starts to sort of sputter out as you get closer and closer to menopause. You have fewer and fewer ovulations. You may not ovulate every single month, which often means your progesterone is gonna be low that particular month. The wildly fluctuating levels of estradiol during perimenopause, some days really high and some days non-existent, mean that there could be some stretches where you experience something called estrogen dominance. That's where there's too much estradiol or estrogen in relation to the amount of progesterone. So it's not that the absolute level of estradiol is too high, it's that the relative level of estradiol is overpowering the uh, level of progesterone that's in your system. By the time you stop having periods, once you reach maybe 50 or early 50 sometime, your progesterone level is really dropping down close to zero because you hardly ever ovulate. There's no longer estrogen dominance because you don't have that high level of estrogen. Now though, you have a different set of problems that are caused by too little estradiol. I posted a whole nother video about that scenario. Well, let's talk about four progesterone scenarios and the impacts of each one of those. First, low progesterone could be caused by no ovulation. The most common reason for not ovulating is something like PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because ovulation doesn't happen, at least not every month, there's a big shortage of progesterone that normally comes from the leftover tissue called the corpus luteum. Having a baby causes a huge drop in progesterone in just a few hours. Normally, progesterone is very high during pregnancy and it can drop to very low levels in a few hours after the baby's born. In perimenopause, ovulation starts happening naturally less and less, not every single month. And progesterone starts declining gradually over maybe a period of four to six years. In menopause, ovulation doesn't really happen at all. And so because that ovulation never happens anymore, there's no progesterone coming from the corpus luteum, which doesn't exist. The ovaries have also shut down, so the little bit of progesterone that would have come from them probably isn't coming from them either. Low progesterone causes some depression, especially things like postpartum depression or menopausal depression. Low progesterone can induce anxiety in a lot of women, especially it can cause sleep problems, insomnia. High progesterone can cause some nausea. Very high levels of progesterone during pregnancy are possibly related to some of the nausea of morning sickness, along with some other hormones like estradiol and one called human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG. Drowsiness is a big problem with progesterone. Progesterone helps with sleep, but high levels of progesterone can also make you drowsy during the day. There's a side note, progesterone, when it's applied to the skin in a transdermal cream, has little to no effect on insomnia or sleep. Really only oral progesterone is what's called metabolized into a derivative of progesterone that actually helps with sleep issues. A lot of women experience sort of paradoxical anxiety and depression with increased doses of progesterone where most women uh, have the opposite effect. Optimal levels of progesterone, not too high, not too low, but just right, are usually around 10 nanograms per milliliter. This is a chart that shows kind of around the average is about 10 nanograms per milliliter, although it's mainly in the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle, not during the first half of the cycle. So optimal progesterone can enhance your sleep. It can decrease insomnia, decrease sort of the fog of menopause that's often related to not getting us enough sleep. Optimal progesterone can reduce anxiety and depression in postpartum, as well as in menopausal women. 
Optimal progesterone can reduce symptoms of estrogen dominance in women who are experiencing PCOS or perimenopause symptoms. Optimal progesterone can help reduce hot flashes and night sweats in menopause, although it's not nearly as effective as estradiol at doing that. Optimal progesterone can also help reduce the long-term risks in menopause, especially osteoporosis and the endometrial overgrowth, the growth of the lining of the uterus, as well as endometrial cancer. If you're a woman who's concerned about your progesterone levels, you may wanna have a hormone optimization specialist take a look at your levels and help you get those to an optimal range. If you click the link on this video that says find a provider, I'll check my database and see if I have somebody in your area. I won't guarantee anything, but it's possible. I have a lot of hormone optimization providers all over the US and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. If you are a hormone optimization provider, I'd love to give you an opportunity to find some new patients. If you wanna click the link that says join provider database, I'll add you to my database and see about finding patients in your area. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.